Can you take me inside those moments for you when you lost your leadership position? Well, you know, I, uh, it was not a surprise. It's really about something that's much, much bigger than, you know, the Republican conference uh, in the House. It's a moment where we have to decide as a party, um, you know, whether we're going to embrace the truth. And you're looking at your Republican colleagues in the eye. How did it feel? What was that like? You know, I, um, I was very honest and, and I told them uh, I have a real affection and admiration for most of them. Um, and, and I, you know, I love this institution. Uh, uh, and, and we all have been put here in this moment by history and history is going to judge us. Three and a half months ago, there was a vote on you, which you overwhelmingly won. 145 votes to 61. Today, it was just a voice vote. It wasn't even close. What happened? What changed? For reasons that I don't understand, leaders in, in my party have decided to embrace the former president who launched that attack. And I think you've watched over the course of the last several months, um, the former president get more aggressive, more vocal, um, pushing the lie. And I, I think that's a really important thing for people to understand. This isn't about looking backwards. This is about the, the real time current potential damage uh, that he's doing, that he continues to do. Some of your colleagues say, though, we supported you before, Congresswoman Cheney. You made your point. Now drop it. Let's focus on the future. Well, it's an ongoing threat. So um, silence is not an option. You've made statements since January 6th. You fist bumped President Biden at the joint address to Congress. Do you think there was a last straw where you lost the support of your Republican colleagues? I think it's very important for all of us, Republicans and Democrats, um, to get back to the days where we engage on substance and where we don't treat our political adversaries uh, as enemies. Uh, I think that the nation demands that uh, and the nation deserves that. I also think that there is real um, concern among a number of members of my own party uh, about a January 6th commission. And uh, I think, you know, I've been very public that that commission needs to be bipartisan. Uh, it needs to look only at January 6th and the events leading up to it, not at the BLM and Antifa riots last summer. And I think that that kind of intense, narrow focus threatens people uh, in my party who um, may have been playing a role they should not have been playing. Do you think there were members of Congress who were complicit in the attack and that a commission could uncover that? You know, I, I don't want to go that far. Each time we have something happen, in this country that is that kind of a crisis, we have a commission. And there is no reason why there should be any resistance uh, to, to doing so in this case. What does it say about former President Trump that he will not accept this loss? That he's unfit, you know, that he, he never again can be anywhere close to the Oval Office. How far are you willing to take this? Would you run for president? I, I think that it is the most important issue that we are facing right now as a country. And we're facing a huge array of issues. So he must not ever again be anywhere close to the Oval Office. But my question was, would you run for president to stop that? I'm going to do everything that I can, uh, both to make sure that that never happens, but also to make sure that the Republican Party gets back to substance and policy. Before I drop it, will, will you rule out a run for president? Right now, I am very focused on um, making sure that our party becomes again a party that stands for truth and stands, stands for fundamental principles that are conservative um, and mostly stands for the Constitution. And I, I won't let uh, a former president or anybody else unravel the democracy. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. One of the things that your critics say is instead of talking about President Biden, we're talking about Liz Cheney, that that is really at the heart of what this vote is about and why they want you out of leadership. Look, I've been very clear that I think President Biden's policies are dangerous. You know, every single day I'm fighting against those policies and we'll continue to do that. My view is to be as effective as we can be to fight against those things. Our party has to be based on truth. To be a leader in the Republican Party right now, do you have to buy the lie? I think it's important for those of us who refuse to do that to be willing to stand up. Again, I obviously believe that the Republican Party policies are much better for the country. 
but I also know that we cannot convince people that they should put their trust in us if we are building our party on a foundation of lies. What is the hold that President Trump has on the party? Well, it's very dangerous. How do you explain it? I think it's a cult of personality. And I think people were, were betrayed and misled by him. It's a real betrayal now that he's willing to try to unravel the democracy to get back into power. 70% of the Republican Party right now believes President Trump's lies about the election. So if you're out of lockstep with the party, why should you be in leadership? Leadership is about uh, leading and, and it's about telling the truth. And it's about making sure that people understand how important these fundamental principles are. And I think that, that you know, that is incumbent upon anybody who's elected, upon anybody who's uh, in leadership, to tell the truth. Will you run for re-election? Absolutely. Do you think you can win? Absolutely. The Trump political team is actively looking to coalesce around a primary challenger to you. What is your message to them? You know, uh, bring it on. Uh, I, as I said, if, if they think that they're going to come into Wyoming and make the argument that the people of Wyoming should vote for someone who is loyal to Donald Trump over somebody who's loyal to the Constitution, I welcome that debate. Are you the leader of the opposition in exile right now in the Republican Party? I, I intend to be the leader, uh, one of the leaders, in, in a fight to help to restore our party, in a fight to bring our party back to substance and principles, uh, and in a fight to, to make clear that we won't participate in, in a really dangerous effort that's underway. A lot of people frame this as a battle for the soul of the Republican Party. But you're out of office. Trump is ascendant. Hasn't that battle been waged and won? Did actually, Trump win it? Actually, I'm in office and he's out of office. Fair. So you're out so of your leadership it, office. It, that is true. Uh, but um, no, look, this is this is the I think opening salvo in that battle, and and it's a battle we have to win um, because it's not just about the Republican Party; uh, it's about the country, and it's about whether or not we're going to respect our electoral process. Do you think Leader McCarthy has placed his own ambitions to be Speaker of the House? above principle? I think that he is not leading with principle right now. Uh, and I think that it is, it's sad and I think it's dangerous. What did it mean when Kevin McCarthy, days after the January 6th riots and insurrection, went down to Mar-a-Lago and visited with President Trump? Leader McCarthy's visit to uh, the former president at Mar-a-Lago was really stunning. Um, you know, w given what the former president did, he's not just a former president. You know, he provoked an attack on the Capitol, uh, an attack on our democracy. And so um, I, I can't understand why, why you would want to go rehabilitate him. If belonging to the Republican Party requires you to believe that the election was fraudulent and that President Trump is the, the rightful winner. Would you ever consider leaving the Republican Party and becoming an independent? I'm not leaving the party. Do you think the president should or could be criminally charged? I think that that is something the Department of Justice um, will decide. Uh, I think it's very important that the investigation that the Department of Justice has underway um, be allowed to go wherever it leads. I think uh, the American people have to know. Your father, former Vice President Dick Cheney, is a veteran of a few political battles himself. What does he think about the stand that you're taking? Oh, I, I talk to him uh, every day, usually. Um, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm just immensely, immensely proud to be his daughter. Uh, I learned from him the importance of having the courage of your convictions. Uh, I learned from him what it means to stand up for what's right. People say, well, this is courageous. You know, I, I'm not landing on Omaha Beach. You know, that's courage. This is duty. Do you think he's proud to be your father on this day? Uh, I know he is. Our conversation with Congresswoman Cheney, actually, I also asked her whether she thinks there's any sexism in anything mm, that's unfolded. And we'll show you what she said at the top of the next hour. If anyone thought. thought you wonder if she was going to hold back, the answer is an O. Oh, she no. was resolute. Wow. She's mm -hmm. defiant. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. I think she'll be making a lot of waves with some mm -hmm. of those remarks. By the way, if you want to see more of our interview with the Congresswoman, you can go to our streaming channel today all day at noon and 6 Eastern. See it almost in its entirety. You'd see it anytime on the Today Show YouTube channel. Oh, okay. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.